So friends, today we will discuss the Gauss law. It is one of the most important law we have in the electrostatics and uh, you will see later on it is actually one of the Maxwell's equation. Okay, so this is a very very important as far as the advanced studies are concerned. So let's understand the Gauss law. Okay. Uh, to understand the Gauss law, first we need to understand what is called as a Gaussian surface. A Gaussian surface is any three-dimensional, any hypothetical, any hypothetical three-dimensional closed surface. Any hypothetical three-dimensional closed surface can be called as Gaussian surface. So, all we need to do is, we need to imagine a three-dimensional closed surface. Okay? You just imagine a three-dimensional closed surface and uh, then you can call it what Gaussian surface? There need not be anything, you know, there need not be a physically, there need not be a body which is present here, okay, physically like this. See, for example, I am considering a Gaussian surface of cubical shape, okay. There it, it's, it's not that as if there is actually a cube present here, okay. All I am doing is, I am imagining a hypothetical cube in the space and I am calling this cube as my Gaussian surface, as my Gaussian surface. So what is a Gaussian surface? You just imagine a three dimensional closed surface in the space and, and you can call it what Gaussian surface. Now as we know that, as we have discussed in the previous meetings that the area is a vector quantity, area is a vector. quantity and its direction is outward normal. So, let us say this is a three dimensional closed surface. Consider a small, consider a small element, area element on this uh, surface, ok. So, this small patch for this small patch, the area vector is in this direction. The area vector is in this direction. Let us say at this location, let us say at this location, electric field is in this direction. This is the net electric field. Okay? And the angle between electric field and the area vector is say theta, then the flux the flux linked with this small element will be E dot dA, will be E dot dA, okay. As we have discussed earlier also, as we have discussed earlier also, the flux is a scalar quantity, okay, you can check from, your, check by yourself, it is nothing but a dot product of two vectors. So, obviously the flux is what? Scalar and uh, therefore it does, does not have any direction. Okay? Therefore it does not have any direction. So, now if I calculate the flux through each one of these small patch on the surface and if I add them algebraically, that is just like the scalars, then what we will get? We will get the total flux linked with this uh, Gaussian surface. From each one of the surface, for example, from this surface, we can calculate what is the flux. This is the area vector for this surface and let us say the electric field for at this location is in this direction. Okay? Let us say dz dash and this some angle 
there is some angle between the electric field and the area. Let me call it theta dash. And the flux linked with this small patch is E dash dot dA. The flux linked with this small patch, here the area vector is like this. Let's say the field is like this. Okay. So flux linked with this uh, small patch will be E double dash dot dA. So in this fashion, what I can do is we can calculate the flux through each one of the small patch and if we add all these fluxes, what we will get is the total flux. What we will get is the total flux linked with the Gaussian surface. And the total flux linked with the Gaussian surface is nothing but summation of E dot dA for each one of the patch. Okay. So, this closed integral E dot dA is the total flux linked with the Gaussian surface. This is the flux linked with the Gaussian surface. Now, Gauss says the total flux linked with the Gaussian surface is nothing but Q enclosed by epsilon naught. All Gauss is saying is you take a Gaussian surface and you calculate the flux through the Gaussian surface in the manner as explained in this meeting. You calculate the flux through each one of this uh, small element, okay, add them like scalars, we will get the total flux through the Gaussian surface. This total flux is equal to charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. Let's say Q1 is a charge which is inside, Q2 is also a charge which is inside, Q3 is a charge which is out, outside, Q4 is here. Okay. So, the Gauss says that the total flux, the Gauss law say, states that the total flux linked with the Gaussian surface is nothing but, is nothing but Q enclosed by epsilon naught. How much is the Q enclosed here? Q1 plus Q2 is a Q enclosed. These two charges, Q3 and Q4, they are not inside the Gaussian surface. Okay. So, a conclusion, what is the Gauss law? The Gauss law states that the flux linked with the Gaussian surface, okay, why I am using this circle here, that means I am finding out the flux through a closed surface. Okay. The flux linked with any Gaussian surface Gaussian surface also you know what it is, okay, a three-dimensional closed surface. So it says it states that the flux linked with the Gaussian surface is nothing but Q enclosed by epsilon naught. By epsilon naught. So that we can see that the total flux linked with the Gaussian surface depends only on the enclosed charges. Okay. Okay. So from here onwards, we will discuss in the next meeting.